Hi, welcome back to Forensic Education. I'm Sergeant Mike McCutcheon. Today I'm going to show you how to use a GSR kit or gunshot residue kit. The kit that I'm going to show you today has two different applications. One is a sample that we're going to send to the lab and the other one is going to be a presumptive test that you can do out in the field to see if there's gunshot residue on someone's hands. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you the kit because this just has category two on it. Depending on what state you're from will depend on what category you use. There's category one and category two. I'm filming this in New Hampshire, so we're a category two kit. Um, so let's open the kit and see what we have inside. So everything that you need is going to be in the kit, including your gloves. So I'm going to put those on. You're going to have a collection envelope that you can put your evidence in once you obtain it. Your directions, your seals for your evidence, and then here is your collection kit. Now what's important is the first test that we're going to do is going to be the evidence we collect that we want to send to the lab because that's going to give us the most accurate information on whether or not someone handled the gun, whether they fired a gun, or whether they're in close proximity when the gun was fired. So we want to make sure we collect that sample first before we do our field test. So the way we're going to do that, so I'm just going to put this here so you can have a close-up of the objects that are in it. The first thing we have is this control. We're not going to open this one as this is going to be just that, our control, to show that the test is working, that we didn't uh, contaminate anything within it, that this one is not going to be open. You can see that there's a seal around the top. That one is going to be put into the envelope just as it is. Now, if you look at these other ones, they're going to tell you where you're going to swab. So now the way we're going to do this, so I'm going to open up the cap. And you see there's a little plunger on the end. That's, a, that's sticky on the end. Okay, you can see that that is sticking. So normally I wouldn't touch that if this were out on the field. And then you're going to swab where it tells you to swab. So this one says index finger in webbing left hand. So I would swap the index finger. This is the web of your hand. And the way you're going to swab is you're going to swab make like a leopard pattern. You want to get all the areas, but you're not swiping your dabbing like so. Once you dab that area, you're going to put the cover back on like so, and then it goes into your sample. And we're going to do that with each one. Open it up. There's the plunger on the end, wherever it tells us to plunge. We're going to dab that, seal it up, and put it in the bag. Now what we're testing for as we're looking for when the gun goes off, that plume, there's going to be lead, barium, and antimony in there, and that's what they're going to be able to test at the lab when they scan it electronically. Now what we're going to do now that we've done our lab tests, we're going to do a presumptive test, which we can do in the field. And when we do that, we're going to use the two pieces of the kit here. Inside this magnified box, is a cotton swab. And what we're going to do with this, so I'm going to use my left hand. If I, this were the dominant hand where you think that the person was holding the gun, you would swab their entire hand, just like I'm doing here. Okay? You really want to make sure you're getting the webbing, the webbing of the hand. We're trying to test for the new. New, uh, nitrocellulose is what we're trying to test for. So we're going to be wiping the hand. We want to make sure we get it good. 
It's important that this stay dry. If the hand is wet, you're going to have to uh, blow on it to get it to be dry because you can't have this wet. Once we do that, we're going to put it in our, our little container. And then it comes with a little ampule that's inside the dropper. So make sure that the dropper is pointing up when you break the ampule. I'm going to just squeeze it and break that ampule. And now I'm going to just drop and then I'm wetting that cotton swab. Okay. Now I'm going to put this cover back on. Now it's a waiting game. Now we're going to wait about five minutes and we're going to be looking through and this is a magnifier so I can see and what we're going to look for is little blue or brown specks that may appear on here. Now if some specks appear and then they disappear within two minutes that's not a positive test. They should be able to um, develop and once you see them you can wait a few minutes and they should be able to stay there from anywhere between five minutes and 24 hours but you need to be able to look. They may be fine where you need to use that magnifying uh, disc on the top to see them, but this is only going to be a presumptive test. You need to make sure that you send your kit in to make sure that you get that accurate test. So now we've done our preliminary test, we've done the lab test, so now we have to seal up. The kit comes with our evidence seal so that we can, whether you use your own transport or you're using the one provided, we need to make sure that we seal that with evidence tape. If you put your items back into the box and you seal them in here and send this whole box to the lab, you can do that. It comes with a sticker that says use kit to be opened by authorized personnel only. You could put that on here and then seal this with ev evidence tape and send that to the lab as well. It's pretty simple kit. If you have one, I suggest that you practice with it first. I'm not able to show you the positive test because we're in the studio, so I wouldn't have any gunshot residue on my hand. Just be aware that gunshot residue is very, very delicate. And just because you don't have gunshot residue appear on your, on your pretest or the test to the lab doesn't mean that the person didn't handle the firearm. Just simply wiping your hands can rub that gunshot residue off. If it's winter and they have a jacket on and it's rubbing, it could rub that gunshot residue off. You may want to take their clothing and test their clothing and not just their hands, including their face or anything that's exposed, any skin that's exposed when you're doing your gunshot test residue. Um, I hope I helped you out and so you can do this on your own. Um, you can get all these products at lynnpv.com. You can watch other videos to learn about evidence processing at forensiceducation.net. And I'll see you next time.